Merchant. Start the recording. Merchant. All right. So a lot of people ask us ATD. And I'm going to put like a question mark. What is a flood coat? Mm -hmm. And that is never a stupid question. Um, because at one time, we all had no idea what a flood coat is. So um, a flood coat is where you just mix a little resin. And if you have maybe um, some hair or a little dry edge or some pits or something or some dust, um, you sand it down, just flood this whole thing with clear so that you know that it's getting in any little scratches or pits or or whatever you're trying to cover up. Um, and this is everything that you need for a flood coat. Just a regular old nice rag, clean of course. Um, some 91% alcohol. Some 400 grit sandpaper, doesn't really matter um, who makes it, who's, who's it by, this is 3M. Um, if you have, if you have uh, some bigger dust maybe, like if a fly or a, you know, a good sized piece of hair got in it overnight, um, you could use uh, 220, just be very careful, just kind of hit it lightly don't sit there and try to go through the clear um, just hit it lightly until it's, you can feel that it's uh, it's flush and then take the 400 and go over that part and the rest of your piece so what you do first um, is you're going to want to put some alcohol directly on your rag so that you make sure you are not sanding anything into your piece. And we're gonna be using some stone coat, quick coat. Um, this stuff is amazing. Your working time is about 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Really, 50, I would say 15, I wouldn't push it, maybe because your climate might be a little different. Um, and it's for smaller pieces unless you're ambitious and want to try to clear coat a larger one I would definitely have somebody there to help you out this is a pretty small piece um, and what you do is just just wipe down any hand prints or over spray or whatever you think might have gotten onto it look at that there's over spray on that Probably from paint or just a, uh, you know, just being near some other, some other projects that you've had and you can't see it. Ours is probably spray paint. Yeah, dust. ours is probably spray paint and dust. So, look at that. You, I had no idea that was even on there and it already looks like super shiny, but I, I'm, uh, I'm not happy with a couple of these edges, they're dry edges, kind of um, not not what I like for my pieces to look like. And now you take your 400. Um, we don't have to use the entire thing. And if you want to save your sandpaper a lot of people will just fold it in half and start sanding and when you do that these two parts grind together and you basically waste an entire piece of sandpaper so this is a little pro tip that I thought of get another rag fold it just about the size of this put it in between there and then that way you're saving these two sides and it makes it a little bit more flush. Is that, is that right? More flush. <laughs> and so you're not digging in with your fingers because sometimes when you, when you sand, uh, your fingers will 
obviously dig into it and you'll be able to see where your fingers are at on your sandpaper. So I like to hold it like a like the number four, if you're saying four, and just lightly, lightly just press on it. And you can see you're getting an even sanding field. Go in circles. Don't stay in one place too long. And you can feel, like you can feel the, you can feel it. You can feel it getting smoother. You can feel if there's dust or debris on it. Don't get too close. Don't sit there and grind the edges because the edge is, uh, the sandpaper will shoot right through that. You'd be surprised at, at uh, what sandpaper can do. So just hit all of your, all your surface. If you see a little divot, just kind of give that some attention. Don't spend too much time on it because the clear will definitely cover that up. You get the middle. And I'm barely pressing on this, as you can tell. You can hear that. And when you start sanding, you'll know. You'll, you'll hear it, you'll feel it. And you should stop. You can see it. And if you like, just lightly hit the hit the sides. It's not really necessary, especially on a small piece like this. Um, and on a large canvas, I I don't think I've ever really sanded the sides. Huh? Only when there's a sharp edge. Yeah, only when there's a sharp sharp edge, and then you definitely want to probably use a a higher grit to knock that down. <clears throat> so now, take your alcohol rag, put a little new alcohol in there, and you're just going to wipe the edge. You can really tell where the low spots are after you sand. Yeah, you can see the low spots. But the good thing about resin is it levels, it self levels. So um, I wouldn't worry about it if you didn't get every single pit, if they're, if they're larger pits. Um, you just gotta give it a good, a good one time over. Okay, there you go. Make sure everything is level. Now, put your lid back on this. Get you some cups. You don't need a lot. I wouldn't do that. I'm gonna take part A, this is the resin. I mean, you don't need a lot, but it doesn't hurt to make a little bit more than you should, just so that you know that it completely covers your entire piece. Um, never, never try to skimp. I understand that resin is expensive, but as they say in the poker world, scared money doesn't make money. <laughs> well, you know what they say. You know what they say. I mean, it's true. You gotta bet big to win big. So, is this resin a one-to-one -one resin? <clears throat> this is a one-to-one -one resin. You just pour. I measured it out here. You can see that they are equal amounts. Get you a little ATD stir stick. Um, I don't know if that, will that fit? You think that'll fit all? Yeah, that should be fine. And
and you want to pour, what should we do? We should pour the, the thinner, mm -hmm. the thinner product into the thicker. No, because it's easier to scrape the thinner off the walls. Basically. Yeah, we just said that. No. It's supposed oh, to be put the thicker, thicker into thinner. Gotcha. It'll incorporate easier that way. I get confused on it a lot. But you don't get the thicker out easier. Well, the, I think the idea is that it's more easily incorporated that way because it's a thinner stuff stuck to the walls than that. And that's why a lot of times people will pour it back into the other one. Yeah, we'll do that as well. Well, just don't forget that you have 15 minutes as of right now. Yeah. <clears throat> you might want to start a time clock as well. Hey, Siri. Start a timer for 15 minutes. Okay, 15 minutes and counting. Scrape the edges. Scrape your stick. And then you, you, can down, you can pour it right back into the other one so you know that you're mixing all of your resin together. Super important to make sure that you fully incorporate your resin into your hardener because if you don't, you'll end up with weak spots in your resin. Yes, you do not want weak spots. Especially if it's a flood coat because you're most likely doing this for a customer or because it's a very nice piece and you're trying to sell it or it has already been sold. I'm shaking everything. I'm shaking I'm everything. That. Yeah. <clears throat> and obviously we don't do this with a script, so that's why you hear us talking like, <laughs> and she's shaking the camera. Sorry, I'm just trying to get the camera off You're of like the table. I completely moved it. Sorry. All right, so nice and mixed up on my sides. And now what you want to do, let's do this. Let's put this to where this is. Everybody can see this. And you can see it on this little guy. All right, so what you want to do, don't pour it on the edge yet, just pour it Pour it right, right up against there, and right down the center, because you can always push your excess to the edge, because you don't want this to fall off. But you're tr you're not trying to take your time either. <laughs> you take your stir stick. And by the way, if you're wondering why this um, stick is blue, this is a prototype. We do not sell these. All right. Throw your cups away. And you can take your heat gun and uh, take these bubbles out you don't want to put it on too high or leave it on for too long because you will accelerate the uh, working time so you don't want to do that you just want to get these bubbles out get it a little thin so it's easier to push around I like to call it bullying bullying the resin because resin definitely has a mind of its own I just made that up, by the way. All right, now make sure you have nothing on your hands. Take your alcohol rag, wipe your hands off, or you can use a stir stick or whatever, but um, I like to use my hands. You can kind of feel around the depth of the resin. A little easier to control that way. 
Make sure all your spots are covered. And then just kind of go over to the edge and just help it. Don't push it over the edge because you're just wanting it to fall. So you get a nice covered edge here. And this is self-leveling. So if you have divots, little potholes in your lawn, That is from Tribe Called Quest. <laughs> you just spread it out there. And kind of go back and forth to if there's any higher spots or lower spots, it'll kind of even it out. And like I said, this is self leveling, so it'll find a low spot and just hang out. And once you're happy with that, just wipe these edges. Make sure those are completely covered. Make sure all of your edges here, you don't want any dry over edge because that's what we were getting rid of in the first place. Take your heat gun, put it on low, let it heat up a little bit so you're not just pushing that around and making it hot. So then you, you're, you're gonna have bubbles because you had messed with it. So just run your heat gun over it. You can see those bubbles popping. Go over it once, maybe come back. This heat gun is really good. This little this little thing is great about distributing out the heat pretty wide, so you don't need a lot of heat on this thing. You don't want this resin to start running. You can always have a good light in front of you so you can kind of get out of angle and see if any hair or dust has gotten into it. And it looks like I have a little bit right here. And remember, this working time is really fast, so you want to make sure you get all this stuff out before it starts setting up. And if it starts setting up and you, you get a, a piece of hair or a piece of dust out of there, and it, you can see it where you, where you grabbed it and it maybe will stick up a little bit, you'll get a little spike. Just hit that lightly with the heat gun and it'll gradually go back down if the setting time isn't already past 20 minutes. But you should be okay. See that? That was definitely, what if that was a piece of rag that was really it does not, there it is. There we go. And it should set up like pretty much like glass. And always have your dust free area ready to ready to go have your little flap open the door however you make your dust free zone and clear of anything that's in there because you definitely don't want to drip some resin on a piece that's been setting if it's gone over the edge, which this really hasn't. I'm really happy with that, unless your area is uneven. Just take your hand and go swipe underneath to get any excess so that you don't have to sand the bottom. 
but I will show you how to do that after this video, how to uh, prep the bottom of, a, this is just a piece of, uh, just a piece of wood. I don't, I don't know. I think it's, what is it? I think it's a piece of mace, piece, piece of masonite. So um, definitely have to sand this one, but get those drips because this stuff will start setting up really fast. And that's kind of what you want. So your set time gives less time for stuff to get in there. So there you go. There's your flood coat. Let me show you what that looks like. Look at that, you can see my light. No wrinkles, just glass. And that is stone coat, quick coat. Can't go wrong with that stuff. Amazing product, amazing company amazing customer service which i'm sure a lot of you already know that i'm going to shout out to old mike and mitch over there um and what's her name the girl shy shay <laughs> and the whole crew good people good business good product i hope that helps you guys Stay tuned or check out the next video how I prep the back of it. See ya. Bye.